This is a short video all about highest common factors. We learned in class how to find out all the factors of a number by creating a factor spider. First we draw a body with the suitable head and then we add in all the factors. So for 24 we always start with 1 because that's a nice easy factor, it goes into everything. And obviously 1 times 24 is 24. So we always do our factors in pairs in order to make sure we don't miss any. So after 1, does 24 divide by 2? Yes it does. And it goes um, 12 times. Does 24 divide by 3? Yes it does. It goes 8 times. Does 24 divide by 4? Yes it does. It goes 6 times. Does 24, uh, does 24 divide by 5? No it doesn't. So then we reach 6, and now because we've already used 6 as a factor, there's no point in going any further. We know we've got all our factors of 24 covered. So let's look at 56. Well, 1 goes into 56 56 times. 2 goes into 56 28 times. 3, uh, no, 3 doesn't go into 56. 4, 4 goes uh, 14 times. 5 doesn't go... 6 doesn't go, 7 does, and that goes 8 times, 7, 8 is 56. 8, oh we've already got 8 on the list so um, we won't go any further. So now we've got all our factors of 56 as well. So the question is, we want to find the highest common factor, the HCF, of 24 and 56. And that's just a simple matter of looking at both of our factor spiders and seeing what's the biggest number that's in both lists. And as we look round, we can see that in fact 8 is that number. So the highest common factor of 24 and 56 is, oops, is 8. Our alternative method is to use prime factor decomposition to work out what the highest common factors of two numbers are. And for small numbers like 24 and 56, there's not really a lot of difference between the two methods. But when we get to much larger numbers, this method becomes quite a lot more efficient than working out loads and loads of factors that we're never going to use. For 24 then, we start off, always start off with a small number. So start off with 2, and then if we can't get uh, 2 doesn't go into the number, we try 3, then 5, and we work our way through the prime numbers. So 2 does go into 24 12 times, and as we said, 2 is a prime number. Again, let's start with 2. Does 2 go into 12? Yes, it does. It goes 6 times, and 2 is a prime number. What about 6? Two, 2 goes into 6 as well. It goes 3 times, and 3 is also a prime number. And now we've reached the stage where we've got prime numbers um, all the way down our tree, so there's no point in trying to divide it down any further. So 24 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. I've done the same for 56 over here, and we've got 2 times 2 times 2 times 7. So I can write out uh, 56 as the product of these prime factors, 2 times 2 times 2 times 7. Oops. So now what we need to do is write a special table. And the table is going to record our factors for each of the numbers, 24 and 56, but in a very special kind of way. Um, let's have a look at this then. So 2... And two. They both got a common factor of 2, so let's put those in here, 2 and 2. Um, there's also another common factor of 2, having crossed out the first one, and we put those above each other in the table here as well. Uh, they've then also got yet another 2 as their prime factors, but then we reach a difference. 3 appears in the list for 24, but 3 doesn't appear in the list for 56, so let's put our 3 in the table and just leave a little blank down below it because 56 doesn't have 3 as a factor. So we can cross that one off. And finally 56 has got 7 as a factor so we can put that down here but 24 doesn't have 7 as a factor. Now to find the highest common factor we need to circle all the numbers which appear in both of those lists. So that's 2, 2 and 2. Um, and the other factors only appear in one of the lists, so we don't include those. Now we've got 2, 2 and 2. What we need to do is multiply those together. 2 times 2 times 2, and that equals 8. So that is our highest common factor. Let's have a look at the highest common factor of 180 and 630. The factor spiders would be quite tricky because there are loads of factors for these numbers. Uh, but prime factor decomposition isn't quite so bad. Let's have a quick look. For 180, I've got 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 5. So 
So I can write those down. And for 630, we've got 2 times 3 times 3 times 5 times 7. So let me write those out. 2 times 3 times 3 times 5 times 7. And now to construct our little table. They both have 2 as a common factor, so I can put those in. But 180 has got another 2, whereas 630 doesn't. So I can put my 2 factor in here. Then 3. They've both got a 3. Um, they both got another 3. They both got a 5. And then 630's also got a 7. Now I can circle all the ones they've got in common. One of the 2's, both the 3's and a 5. And write them down beneath. 2 times 3 times 3 times 5. So that is 3 times 3 is 9, and 2 times 5 is 10, so 9 times 10 is equal to 90. That means 90 is the highest common factor of 180 and 630. Now have a go at them yourself. Find the highest common factor of 240 and 320. Pause this video now, and then when you've completed your answer, have a look at my solution. Here are the common factors. Here are the uh, here are the prime factor decompositions of two hundred and forty and three hundred and twenty. Let's put them in the table then. So the first two goes into each, and the second two goes into both of them. The third two goes into both of them. The fourth two goes into both of them. Then 320 has got two more 2's, and then 240 has got a 3, and then they've both got a 5 as a common factor. Now circle the common prime factors, here and here, and we've got 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 5, which is equal to 80. So the highest common factor of 240 and 320 is 80.